Okay guys, welcome back. This is day two of Minecraft. Uh, Anthony and I have kind of expanded our house a little more than you would in one night. So after your first night you can either play outside or just wait inside and hold out till day. So what we've done is we've gone through, we dug out this nice cute little house. Um, we started our little chest storage area back here, so we've got chests, we've labeled them. And you might think three chests won't be enough, but you'll see what happens with our new Tekkit mods. These are barrels, these are fun devices, and we'll get to them in a bit. So, right now we are having a food shortage, so we're going to go over food and everything it's used for. Hungry! Yes, Anthony is hungry and he needs food. Because he gets really pissy when he's mad. So hungry. So, our quick source of food will be cow. Where's our crafting table? What do we need that for? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so, as, as you watch me kill cows, you'll notice that I am jumping to get an automatic critical hit on them and stabbing them. Um. If you're also particularly Good. observant, you'll notice my XP has reset since the last time we've played. Which is unusual in the sense that this is not necessarily the same world we played on last time. We cheated. We cheated a little bit. Okay, so we have a crafting table. If I had a furnace, I would also be cooking food right now. You're so picky. I am so needy. I'm gonna get some tree. So in here we've got some tree. And I'm going to go over how to make these barrels and what they're used for. So, here's some meat. I'm going to throw some meat to my friend. So, we have three furnaces. I don't know why. We and use them eventually. It's true, we do. Alright. So, this is how we make a barrel. We're going to pretend I don't know how to make a barrel. We're going to search for it. We're going to hit the R button. And this is how you craft a barrel. And we're going to click this question mark. And as you can see, it is now overlaid on our crafting grid. So I'm going to make two of these and fill in the holes in our wall. And then we'll go over why these are such great toys. Now, as you go through Minecraft, there are a couple things you'll build up enormous loads of. And, oh. Okay, good. Well, this is fine. So it's barrelception. <laughs> I heard you like barrels. So obviously, you'll come across a lot of cobblestone while you're digging, a lot of dirt, and a lot of barrels. So let's say I'm tired of cobblestone and I don't want any more. I'm going to shove it all in this barrel, and then for some reason, someday I'm like, you know, I want my cobblestone back. So I walk over to my barrel and I'm gonna smack it. And it's gonna give me one stack of cobblestone. And then I use up my, what the heck? Is, is this real cobblestone? <laughs> this is not cobblestone! <laughs> Why would you give this to me? So we've got our cobblestone monster egg, which is a rare block that spawns underneath extreme hill biomes and in strongholds, and they spawn silverfish. <laughs> you're, you're, I, I don't even know what to do with you right now. So let's suppose I came across enormous blocks of this. I had a silk touch enchanted pickaxe maybe that could harvest it, and I decided I don't want these. I'm going to shove them somewhere. So I'm just going to right click on my barrel, and it's going to put it all in there. Now let's say, for some reason, I had tons of these cobblestone with me. Like, for some reason, I just have this much. So I'm going to put it in there, and then see this rest of it in my inventory? I've got my blank hand. I'm just going to double click. And bam, it all goes in there. Now I have 383 cobblestone monster eggs. <laughs> and I'm sure that the next time I come back in this room, these will all be replaced with normal cobblestone. God help me. Oh, another fun thing about this while I'm here, I guess, is if you ever come across these, you can identify them in two ways. One, a normal pickaxe takes forever to break it. So notice how quickly that broke? 
versus Why would you this? do that? Because I... Why would you fill a chest with monster eggs? Now, let's say I take out my fist. Notice how much faster it breaks than without. Oh, I got a medium stone from that, so that's kind of cheating. But see how much faster it broke? That's that's the identifying way. I'm just going to put this in here with the other stones. I'm going to put my cobblestone monster egg back in here. You know, this is... Oh, that's that's what the secret was. I was wondering what would happen if you tried to break one of these while there were items in it, but I guess when you hit it, it spits an item at you, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. Okay. So, now, somewhere in here, Anthony cooked food. And I don't really know where, and I don't particularly care where. So... Did you find I haven't actually cooked any of the food yet. That's what I thought. I didn't have any, uh, what's that? So, if you're new to Minecraft, food is like, you use food whenever you do anything. When you walk, when you run, when you move, when you jump, when you break things. And the more strenuous the activity, the more food it uses. You also require minimum amounts of food to heal and drink. Drink, that's not the word I'm looking for. Sprint. Heal and sprint. So if you have less than... I think three or two food, you can't sprint. If you have less than eight food, which means you're missing two, you can't heal. If you have enough food, you'll slowly heal your health one half heart at a time. So, food's very important. You always need to have food with you. And if you'll notice, you heard the little XP dinky noise. And my level went up a little bit. And that's just because pretty much anything you do now gives XP, so taking things out of furnaces that you crafted, you missed. Damn it. Taking things out of furnaces you craft will give you XP, mining certain ores will give you XP, so it's a lot easier to level up. And there's the only benefit to being a higher level is you can spend more of your levels on enchantments, so the higher level the more powerful the enchantment you can put on. And because this is Minecraft 1.4, you can spend additional enchantment point, enchantment levels, your levels, using an anvil to further enchant your items. So we're going to quick show you Anthony's in my room. We he used creative mode to build these, so these are not necessarily materials you would have available to you. But he's very proud of them, so we'll show them off to the whole world. So this is his room. Notice his cute little slime. Got a little creeper watching him while he sleeps. That's creepy. He's got a chest. I wonder if he's got anything in there. No, it's just for show. And then he, being the wonderful and creative guy he is, made me a cave. So this is my cave. Uh, oh, he put the fire out. Uh, this is my spider web. And if I jump in my spider web, I fall very slowly. It's really quite a pain. See, your room is more fun than mine. Yeah, okay, we can trade then. So... Let's suppose we're on day two of Minecraft. Our next goal is after establishing a food supply, which five, six steaks will last you quite a while, is to start caving. So, in order to go caving, you need certain materials, namely wood and cobblestone. And that's because while you're down there, you're going to need lots of pickaxes and lots of torches. So you can get more cobblestone while we're down there, so we're just going to get to it. Now, if we look on our mini-map here, just above the 63 number, we've got this huge, awkward-looking white thing in the ground. So that says to me, giant hole. And that's how I actually came across this giant hole, so this is an enormous hole into the ground. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to carefully and safely descend this. He says that. Uh, but he's gonna die. So what I'm really gonna do is I'm probably just gonna pause the video and dig a stairwell down there because no one wants to see that. So let's do that. Okay, so caving's a little distracting, so I'm just gonna go through slowly while you watch me in a cave and describe kind of what I'm aiming to do. So the first thing I do is I always put torches on the left. So when you're going straight through a cave, you're walking down a hallway and you always put torches on the left 
when you go in one direction to the hallway, they'll be on your left. When they're on the other, they'll be on your right. So in order to go home, you follow the torches and keep them on the right. And that's a very simple technique. A lot of players use it. Um, some players use torch on the right. You just need to know what your method is, and that will keep you very well oriented underground. The next thing is the whole reason we're down here. What is it we're looking for? So in Tekkit, they've added a whole lot of new ores, and you'll see them while I'm going around underground. Um, we're looking for coal, which is a classic ore, and iron. Those are two biggies. We also need a lot of copper and tin. So copper is orange in my texture pack. It's orange in the classic pack as well. And tin is kind of whitish. Uh, tin spawns much deeper than copper does, so you have to go below 55, I believe, in order to get tin. So if you're not finding tin, you have to go a little deeper. Uh, we're also going to look for redstone. And while in this segment I don't go deep enough to get redstone, you will require at least 16 redstone to make all the machines necessary to get industrial craft 2 off the ground. In addition to those ores, which is what we're really focusing on in our first cave experience, we're going to come across gems. So Minecraft 1.4.7 adds emeralds, and we're not going to find any emeralds. Emeralds spawn only under extreme hill biomes, and they're fairly rare. They usually spawn in one or two blocks, and you use those to trade with villagers. The gems we're going to come across are Tekkit gems, and these are green sapphires, blue sapphires, and rubies. And these gems you use to make tools um, that you can normally make out of any other material. So you can make swords, pickaxes, uh, shovels, axes, and that's what we'll be using them for. So we're going to upgrade to gem weapons and materials or necessarily weapons. We'll stay with our stone or iron halberds since those are very powerful. But the tools are a real, really handy. So the reason we make all our tools out of gems is the gems have a slightly higher durability and speed than iron, which is very nice. But it's actually so that we don't use iron. We're saving all of our iron to make machine blocks for industrial craft. Every machine takes at least eight iron to make. And then advanced machines require even more. So we need tons of iron to make tons of machines to power everything and to kind of get our facilities up and running. After we make those machines, then you can debate about whether or not you want to use iron or not, but you will come across far more gems than you will need. So there's no harm in using them. Okay, so the last ore we're going to encounter a bit while we're underground is uranium. And so you can use uranium to make nuclear power plants, nuclear reactors, and this is all high risk, high reward. So, for now, we'll just collect all the uranium we find, and we'll set it off to the side for now. In order to get a sizable reactor going, you do need a lot of uranium, and we're still working on how to develop an effective reactor without alchemy, without equivalent exchange degree. So, when we're down in these caves, we're going to come across a lot of ore, and we want to collect all of the ore we come across. In vanilla Minecraft, this wasn't a problem, you had ore out the wazoo, but in Tekkit we will be using all of the ore we come across. We will have shortages, and you will be very thankful that you did pick up those couple extra ore blocks along the way. So, that is something to keep in mind. 